Hi, this video supports the Watts 4000 course uh, in the Watts certification program at Seattle University. And this week we're going to be looking at bootstrapping an app and we'll be using Vue.js. We'll be using Vue 2 and Vue CLI 3. So those are the Vue 2 will control our source code and Vue CLI 3 will control how we build it. Um, so we're going to work through three chapters in the in the 4000 text, which is available online. Um, and we're going to first bootstrap the app here, and we'll be following along with the project notes. But before you move to that, highly recommend reading the core concepts, the steps for creating the app, getting to know Vue, because these will go into some of the build concepts as well as some of the some of the language concepts so that you can use directives in this um, program and um, deal with data and components. Um, there's also a quiz and then we're going to work through this uh, bootstrapping the app. We'll then move on to this 5.5 project debugging. So we'll look at how we can debug our develop our dev environment app. And then we'll move to deploying the app. We'll be deploying it to GitHub Pages. Um, and so we'll look at building the app and then pushing it out to GitHub Pages and getting it rendered on GitHub I.O. All right, so let's start in then with, the, with uh, bootstrapping the app. For most courses in this um, Watts 4000 class, Oh, sorry, for most assignments in this Watts 4000 class, we will be starting with a project on GitHub and forking it and then adding some additional code as we learn about different concepts and ways of writing an app in Vue.js. But for this particular assignment, we'll actually bootstrap it from scratch. And in order to do that, we're going to be using the Vue CLI. So this is the command line interface and we're specifically using Vue CLI 3. So if I look up Vue CLI 3, you can find a website that will walk you through all, sort, all sorts of facets of, of working with this new CLI. It's recently released, and um, that's uh, what we're going to, our commands will follow along with that. So the first thing that we want to do, um, of course, there are steps for installing a node and we're and installing npm and get which we did in a previous project um, but in this uh, project since we'll be starting from scratch we're going to want to install globally a node package at view slash cli and note that this is the view through view cli3 that um, this will, and it, as opposed to if you see view-cli, that would be the view CLI2. So you want to be using this one. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and go to a command line. And I'm sitting here in my projects command line. And we'll just, we can just copy and paste that into the command line. And this will not install anything locally. The dash G for NPM will install it globally. But when I'm done, I will be able to look at my current version of Vue, find out where it's installed. And if you're running on Windows, I'm on a Mac here, you can do this in Git Bash, which is, you'll get Git Bash when you install Git. So let's let that run. And then if I say Vue dash dash version, I can see I'm at version 3.4.0. If I say which view, I can see that it's been installed in NPM packages. So this is where global installs occur for Mac um, on my setup. The next thing we're going to do is call the view create and, and we'll create a test project here. So right now there's nothing in here. So view create test project. So create and name. These are options for the view command. And when you do this, you're going to have a, a kind of a, a, a an interface that's command line, but it has a way to pick options, and you, you can use the arrow keys like so. And in the notes here, I go through um, some of the, well, in the reading, some of the 
options and what they mean. But I'm just going to pick the default, which is going to install Babel, which is going to be our transpiler. It'll take our .view uh, files that contain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and turn them into static files, so individual HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript. And you'll see that happen in this uh, demo. And then ESLint, which will um, provide some linting and help keep our syntax and our styles clean. So we'll pick that, and this will go about creating this test project. And you notice it's going to initialize a Git repository. So I'll automatically have an, a Git repos a local Git repository set up, and it will also uh, provide. Um, it'll install all of the dependencies for NPM. So that while this takes place, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to pause. Oh, there it is. All done. Okay, so that's done. And you can see that when it's done, uh, we look for no, no vulnerabilities, no, no security problems, that it tells me I can CD into test project and run the NPM run serve. So that is the way that I can, you know, do this in the command line because I've created this test project. And if I look at what's in there, um, you can see it's a standard um, file system for the CLI3 to operate on. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and open this project up in VS Code and work through that command line. So if I open that up, code, and I'll create a new window. And I'll open projects and test project. And I'm going to uh, control tick that, get my um, command line there. And now that I'm in this project, so I'm in the test project, I can run my my dev server. So this will start a development server. It won't create any new files, but I can click on that. And this is the out-of-the-box template that we get with the CLI3 view create install. Uh, let's go back and have a look at the next step. So we've got that serving and we see this picture. The next thing we want to do is to modify the Hello World component. So we're going to locate that Hello World component and we're given a new template here. So let's just, well actually this is showing the current template. Let's go take a look. So if we drill down the components, there's the Hello World. This is what you get from, from view and this is what we saw rendered. And we can identify here the template, the script, and the scope style. So we've got all of those three parts to our view. And we're going to start by modifying the template. So we're going to grab this code, our new template, and we'll just replace it here. And sometimes I find it easy. I'm here in Visual Studio Code to just uh, collapse that and then replace it like that. But that doesn't look like it would quite work. Let's see if I collapse that and delete it. It's not really deleting it. Let's just go ahead and grab this template. So this is the existing template, the one that's provided. And I'm just going to select it and Control V. So now I get my new template. It compiles. It's running a kind of live server, so I can see here's what I've rend here's what I'm rendering, and what we've got in here is um, one thing we should talk about is where this message comes from, and it's discussed in the readings. But the way that this message comes in is through what's called props, which is short for properties. So it's a way to pass data from a parent to a child. And from our last discussion, we know that app view um, loads components like Hello World um, so that we can use them sort of as HTML tags. So we have this Hello World tag that is because we have this Hello World component. And we have an attribute called MSG, our message, which we've set to this string, welcome to your Vue.js app. And so that 
gets declared in our script portion as props and then made available to a, our template via I'm going I'm using the the two-way binding um, that with the mustache so if you look at what's rendered this welcome message actually the string originates in the parent the app view uh, as does the logo so the logo the logo and the message come from there but the rendering of the message takes place in the hello world so all, we, all we've done now is we've, we've replaced the template we're using the data differently uh, and we've provided this this list so we have this list and it happens to be rendering horizontally and if we look at our um, uh, if we look at our the co the CSS that was provided, the LIs are set to display inline blocks. So we're seeing this render horizontally. So all we've done is we've replaced the template. And the next step we want to do, so we can see that we're, we're seeing this rendered. Next step is we want to change the styles. So we're going to grab this style. And again, these are scope styles, and that's discussed in the earlier uh, discussion the other the earlier work we did um, with uh, creating a markdown editor um, so the scope styles are are use uh, data render data in the HTML so that it can link up the the HTML for this component with the specific styles and these styles won't be used in any other component they're scoped explicitly to this component. But we're going to replace the current styles. And by the way, I'm using um, a uh, VS Code plugin called Vetter. So you can load that. And that, that helps me to be able to format these files, the .view files, that contain, you know, mixed mixed languages. We've got HTML, we've got JavaScript, and we've got CSS all in one file, but we can we can still format them. Um, so I think there's also an, a setting that I've got in there, so let's just take a look at that. In my code settings, uh, let's see, if I search for HTML um, you could see better has put, I'm using pretty HTML and you have a couple of options, but I'm using the pretty HTML. So I'm getting whatever uh, that gives me for this, but it's nice to be able to format all of your code. So better can help you with that. So we've got this. Now let's just take a look. What, what, what did we tell it? What did we give it? We have, we still have the Oh, wait, did I replace that? Let's see. I grabbed that H3. Oh, no, that's the current. This is the original code. And I'm asked in this assignment to replace it with this style. So let's replace those styles. So I'm just copying and pasting from the project. Um, and let's see what that renders. OK, we've got this now listing vertically, so you can see that um, the display is is list item. So rather than the inline um, this, um, block, I'm getting the the list item, and um, we're using list style decimal. So I get the one dot two dot. So I can that's how I can modify styles. And then the next thing, oh, we can take a look at how that scope styling works. So if we go to our browser and inspect and let's take a look inside here you can see this is what i was talking about how the data contains an id and that id maps to a attribute selector so that's how you're able to scope that those styles down to this particular component and view takes care of that for you so all you have to do uh, is to use the scoped keyword there and that kind of um, control will be provided for you through the data list. Uh, 
the next thing we want to do is get into the logic. So right now, the logic that we get from our you know, installation template is just providing us this prop. So we have access to whatever string our, our, our parent sends to us. So whoever uses this hello world tag, whatever component uses that, can send a string into hello world. And so right now, that is the only that, that's the only thing we're really, besides the name, which we want the name to be matching whatever name <coughs> that we've provided for the component. But with this um, props, uh, we, we, um, we just take on the whatever string was passed to us. But we can add data. So we can add this data element. And this is in the reading, in the book to read about this. So we can actually create a function. So it's, it, the syntax is just to add a comma. So all of these in this export default are just comma separated key value pairs. Props was an object. Data is a function. And so we will just add this function. I'll just grab this whole script. That returns an object with a name. Key is name, value is Sean. And so when working with this data function, the requirement is that it just return an object. It can even return an empty object, but it, view is expecting it to return an object. So we'll just replace that. Okay, and we'll go back to our, see what, what happened there. Okay. So we haven't done anything with that data yet. We've just all we've done is to add that code. So we now, though, do have access to a piece of data with the, with an, that is, goes, is referenced by the word name and contains a value of Sean. And so what we can do with that is add to our template. And data, just like props, uses the, um, it uses the mustache syntax in the template to make itself Bound. So we'll just add that in here. So you see, all we've done, we've added some data to using our data function, and we're returning a name key. And so we can use that in our we can use that in our um, template, and there we can render that data. So that's two different ways that we can make data available to the to our uh, template. So the next thing is um, we can modify that data. So uh, why don't you go in and put your own name into that name field and just take a look at what happens. So it, we're modifying this data value. And I'll just make it Becky. And when I go take a look at my project, it renders Becky. So that is um, how you can. And you can add more fields and you know add more data values into that returned object, add more mustache up here. You can, you can kind of play around with that. You can also go back to the apps uh, uh, component and modify the message to see how that works. But this is the original message, and then I've added. So we can add this some additional data into this data object that we're returning from the data function. Uh, and so we're going to add a couple of numbers. So yes, these can be of many different types. Uh, and by the way, um, let's take a look at adding this in first. So we'll change this. I'll just replace this script tag to match the assignment. And oh, we need another comma there. Um, what, uh, what you may have noticed out here in the what it's saying two difficult things that are two things that are difficult in JavaScript yet yeah, we've got three things right but that's not an error the problem is that one off by one errors are a big problem so we because we count from zero so um, anyway that's that is a joke that's not an error there all right, so looking back at, um, we've added this to the project, so we have the numbers in there. The next thing that we want to do is to 
um, update the template um, so that we can uh, talk about doing some multiplication on those numbers. So again, because they're in data, we can put them in our mustache. So we'll, we'll just basically grab, this is the only thing that's changing, the paragraph, and we'll put that under H1. H1, we'll just put that right here. And this should render our numbers out into the DOM. And there we see what is 42 times 78. And the next thing that we want to do is do some event handling. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify what we just did. So what is you know the two this num num one times num two. And we're going to put in this span tag with a VF directive. And the VF says only render it if this product um, reference is evaluates to true. And remember in JavaScript, um, certain, you know, there's obviously Boolean true and false, but JavaScript also evaluates to false things like null and undefined. So if we haven't defined that or it's null, then we won't even try to render the product. But if we have the product data defined, then we will render it. And then we're going to put out a button that says we're going to use the VON directive with the click to uh, call a function called calculate. So, um, and this is described here, um, but let's just grab this and we will get that into our template. So let's just go replace that in the in the template where we had that paragraph. And I'm going to use my formatter and I'm going to go look at what that did. So I now have 42 times 78. I don't see the product because I haven't defined it yet. Um, so there's nothing to render and the BF keeps it out of the DOM. Um, you know, even if you were to inspect, you won't see it rendered in any hidden state. It's just um, all, we, all we see is our question. And then we have this calculate button. So, and the calculate button um, is looking, going to look for a calculate product function. So let's look at how we set that up. Basically, we're going to use methods. So just like methods in, in a class, just like being able to add functions in a class, we add a key called methods to our, our list of key value pairs in this uh, script. And in the methods, we have an object. And in that object, we can define more key value pairs where the key is the name of the method and then the value is a function. And we're not using arrow functions here. We want to use the full function. And we can say this product equals this num1 times this num2. We can refer to items in this data object as this. We do need to add product null. So let's start by doing that. We'll go in here. We'll add our null product. And that won't change anything. We still don't see anything because null evaluates to false. Um, and then we're going to add our methods. So let's grab this chunk here. And this again will give us our calculate product because what we're trying to do in our, um, what we want to do in our template is have it so that if you click on that button, it's going to call the calculate product. So this will get the calculate product defined. Again, we'll look for the end of the data, put in and then put in our comma and the methods. We're still compiling. So sometimes this can be a little difficult to look at, but if you can think of it that the export default is one large object, and then you're looking at key value pairs, props is an object, data is a function, methods is an object that contains key value pairs where the key is the name of the function and the product or method and the and the value is the function specification. So what we've got is we've got a null product going in, but if we click on the button, it should calculate it, and then our VIF should be true, because now we are not null, we have something there, and that would evaluate to true, and then we display the value. So let's take a look and see if that worked. And we're in here, and we click on calculate, and there's our 
our product. So that kind of gets you the ability to do event handling and create methods to do those events. Um, so our calculation was performed. So this is what we want to, this is, this is what we want to deliver. Now you can go back in and do more work with this. You can continue uh, modifying code and trying things out, but this is, this is our deliverable. Okay, well we're not done yet because we, we want to work on debugging. So we want to learn some debugging techniques and then we'll go to deploying. So let's look at this project here on debugging. Um, the thing that you want to do is install DevTools and this is described um, you definitely want to read this information here and how you can bring in the, Chrome, the dev, view dev tools, bring them in as an extension, and then we'll see how that works in this project. Um, so what we're, we're going to see, we want to take a look at what these dev tools look like. So if I, and now these dev tools really only work on dev, so you're not going to be able to do this with, with projects deployed on GitHub I.O., but Looking in here, when I, I've, I've installed it, this is my Chrome extension, um, and you know there are, there are a, a lot of information on how to install Chrome extensions, and there's links in the reading on getting this. But once I've installed this extension, I can it will show up in my Dev Tools, and when I click on it, you can see that I get some extra information that's related to View. And some of the most important things are that I can actually view the data. So I can see the props, I can see the data, I can verify that it's what I think it is. So this gives me some of that. And you know, if I'm dealing with events, I can do some work with events. Vuex is a state manager, but mostly I tend to use this a lot just to verify that my data looks good. And I can also, um, catch syntax errors. So it gives you a nice big error when you make a syntax error and it'll show up in the web. So let's say I go and make a syntax error and uh, let's just say I put a semicolon in here and then I go look out here at my project. You can see I get a, a great big old error there and it, it, it directs me right to the line number and it even points at the error. So you get some in, increased syntax handling. The other thing that it does is, um, you know, I'm writing the I'm writing this code in uh, view, you know, view, but um, the dot view files again. I'm not running. I, you don't. You can't actually. You know, you can try this if you know opening one of these in the browser, but it's not going to do. Let's just take a look. So if I open up one, open up another terminal, and I say. Open uh, source components hello world view. So this is going to open that up in the browser. Um, should have opened it. It probably won't open it because it's it's like let's try it from this side. If I do command O and I drill down to this project, I just want to show you that these are not files that will ever run in the browser. Not, not the way you would want them to. So it is opening up the code. So, so this is not what we're seeing when we run npm run serve. We're, npm run serve is actually transpiling these and running them through some webpack configuration to create something that will render essentially HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files separately. And to get back to that, so with the view dev tools, I can see that too. I can actually see the files I wrote and I can debug them. So if I'm in here, I can, and I'm wondering if my calculate product is, is running the way I expect, I can put a breakpoint and I can see that num1 is 42, num2 is 40, is uh, 78, and I can step through it. I can see that product got calculated that way. So I have this ability to use standard debugger uh, as if these files were actually rendering the way I wrote them. Um, and so those are some of the debugging tools. So if you're running into problems with your code, that's a good thing because that'll force you to get in and use the debugger and work through some of that. 
All right, so once we got the debugger running, or the debugger kind of figured out, and we've got our program running the way we want, it's ready to deliver, the next step is to get into uh, the tooling for building and deployment. So one of the things that we're going to need to do is add a couple of config files to our project that will allow it to be built to the docs directory. Um, and we also want to have it set up so that our index docs.js goes under docs and then we're going to have an assets folder that contains our JavaScript and CSS. So we're setting up an asset stir. And this is all happening down here. Um, we're setting the public path to the empty string because we're rendering in GitHub I.O. so we're really down the path a bit. You know, we're like GitHub I.O. slash your repo, your account name slash repo. So we don't want to, you know, have this be like a, we don't want this to be an absolute path. We're not, we're not deploying from the root of GitHub I.O. So we set that up. We also are going to bring in an aliases config file. And this is kind of a file that just pr provides the ability to shortcut the word source. So we can just refer to it with the at symbol. And that's just a convenience. <clears throat> so you'll add um, this code here too. So we got a couple of config files. Once you do that, you're ready to run npm run build. So let's take a look at that. We, we're going to start in here with the project with creating a, a new repository. So let's say, um, let's create demo create repo. So we'll go in and create a new repository and demo create repo. And you can name that whatever you want. Um, so this is uh, demoing the creation of a Vue.js project. It's public. Um, we do we have a readme in there? We do have a readme in there. It got created for us. So we don't need to create a readme. But I'll, you'll want as part of your project always to go in and make that readme what you want it to be. So you will want to go in and modify that readme to describe more what, you, what you're doing. Often though, like this readme shows you that it gives you instructions for running commands. So you can leave those, but you might want to describe a little more what's going on and why you're, what this project is about in the readme. But we don't need to add a readme, and we also don't need to add a license. So, or let's see, we could add a license, but I'm not going to be too concerned about that here. Anyway, I'm going to click on Create Repository, and GitHub will give me instructions for, for doing this. Now, we don't need to do this step on Echo or a readme because we already have one. So we'll start with get init. So we we'll go to the command line. Again, we're in the root of our project, get init. And oh, we actually don't need to do that either because remember the create uh, project from view, view create actually created us a local get file. So we've already got, you know, get status. I've already can see that I've made modification to hello world view. So that, that got created for us. So you don't need to do that. You don't need to do the readme. So really we're at this first commit. So we can just do that. And of course that should, that will, um, let's see, what do we got here? Get status. Uh, we, oh, we need to do the get add. Well, since we're not doing a get add readme, I'm just, I like to just do get add dot. You'll sometimes see it get add a um, for or dash a for add all. I always use get add dot because it means, okay, load everything from this current directory down. And then I could have also said get add source components hello world since there's only one of them. Git commit dash m first commit. And then we need to attach it to this, this uh, remote repository. So we'll use that command from GitHub. And then we're going to push it to origin master. So this push to origin, it'll send it out to the That will send it out to the um, internet, to our github.com. So once we've done that, and these, these are all described, these steps in here. And again, oh, you know what though? 
that takes care of deploying. That kind of sets us up so that all of our code is deployed, but we haven't created the docs directory. We haven't run the build, so we need to do that. And in order to do that, we need to create these config files. So you create these in the root, and there's a couple ways you can use the GUI. You know, you can do a, a new project. You can also, if you're in the root, you can say touch view config js and touch aliases conf aliases config js. Okay, so that creates a couple of new files. And then all that you're going to do is just copy and paste this into your file. Oh, by the way, this there is, uh, let's see, so if we go into view config, and again, so we're building for docs, we're using a source map for CSS, that helps us to be able to debug and look at our CSS in um, the inspector. We have this idea that I'm deleting, I'm deleting rules for ESLint for the build because I don't want that to get in the way of my build. And you can comment that out if you want to see if you've broken any of those rules. I know this can get in the way for some students because sometimes the ESLint rules can be arbitrary or you're not quite sure what they're getting at. And I think you're okay as long as you don't have syntax errors. Uh, although it's nice to have this, so you might take a look at that. And then, of course, bringing in the aliases just so we can have that, that nice to have at symbol. So we also need to get the aliases file in there. So this one, and this is written in JavaScript as well. So you can, you can look at it and see what you make of it. You know, we're just using some objects and then running through and exporting some of these things for Webpack. Webpack is a whole um, branch of study in itself. If you're interested in DevOps, Webpack would be of interest to you. But anyway, that gets us our two, um, now we're ready, our two config files we're ready to build. So we should be able to do the npm run build command. And let's just take a look at the output here. So this will actually create files and we expect it's going to create a docs folder. So there it is. And you notice there's an assets folder with our CSS images and JS. And then we have the index.html. It gives us the favicon. You can create your own favicon if you want. Um, and then um, you notice it's, it doesn't format nicely like you might want to read it. Don't worry about that because this is, this is essentially, you know, normally Webpack wants to write to a dist folder, but since we want to be able to put this um, on, we want docs so that we can render it on GitHub IO. We have made that change in our view config JS file. And um, we don't really care the structure of these files. This is like these, this JavaScript is, you know, you can see that it's creating the vendor section and it's chunking it. And, and we're not really gonna work with that. In fact, that's why we have the Vue.js dev tools so that we can get mappings and, and not have to work with it. And actually when it's deployed, we like these numbers, they keep it from getting cached in the browser. Um, and we like it minified because we want it small so it loads fast. So those are kind of just things that we're creating so that we can do the rendering. So now we've got these files and we'll run to add these to get and commit. Build for GitHub. And we'll push. I happen to have a pass phrase on my SSH keys, but not necessary to set that up. Uh, and so now we should have got that out there. And if we go look at this, we should see our code and we should see our docs files. And we can go to settings and set up our, set it up to deploy. So notice I'm not gonna pick master branch, I'm picking the docs folder. I'm gonna save that and I'll enforce it. Um, because I'm using my DNS, let's see. And we'll just wait for that to get published. And there it is. So I can grab that link and go back to my code and just take care of putting this website in here. This makes it easy for users to 
look at my code and look at my rendered code all in one link. But please do turn in two links because uh, it just makes it more for sure for me what you're trying to get graded on. And so I want to see a github.com or yes, I want to see a github.com link. And then I want to see a link that that shows me that it's gotten out to GitHub.io. So um, here you don't see GitHub.io because I've got a, a DNS name on it, but I want to see something that's rendered. So two links. All right, so this is the this covers the three sections that we wanted to uh, bootstrapping the app, debugging it, and deploying it. And again, we're really only going to do this bootstrapping in this assignment. Most of the time we'll be starting with an app that's already created and forked. One more thing is there is a working repository uh, in our SU web dev of this called Bootstrap View, View JS. So you can actually check yourself against this. If you're like just completely frustrated and things aren't working, you can go through and check that you have all of this. You can also look at it rendered um, out there on in, from our SU web dev. But don't fork this, don't copy it, you know. Work on your own, but this can kind of serve as a backup for you. All right. Well, I hope that uh, all makes sense, and um, you can get a real heads up, real good start here with Vue.js, so that we'll be ready to start writing apps. All right.